Here are eight random things I learned about Monster Hunter Rise. This episode will be the money making edition. Cause I don't know about y'all, but I barely buy anything in this game and I'm constantly broke as shit. So let's get fiscal, fiscal, ugh. Say you're close into making that next piece of drip, but you're a few grand short. Well, something you can do for some quick cash is sell your body, uh, I mean, sell your monster body parts in your box. Go to your box, manage items, sell items, sort with the minus button, then scroll over with the shoulder buttons and sell some stuff you have a bunch of. To sell something, you have to weirdly hit the Y button to pull up the sub menu and then sell it. Even though you're already in the sell items menu, rarer monster parts sell for more than common items and parts from high rank monsters sell for more than low rank parts. If you have no plans to make like, I don't know, Barith armor, then you're probably not gonna need all 13 Barith ridges. But to that end, I don't recommend selling all of one type of item since you'll never know what random item you'll need to upgrade a weapon in the future. My general rule is to keep at least 5 of each monster part, but aim for at least 10. Any more than that, you can sell no problem. If an item description, like for steel eggs, says, fetch is a fair price or good price or whatever, sell it. It has no secret purpose, you won't need it later, just sell all of them. Speaking of, you can get some rare crack rocks from other monster hunter locations by talking to the Argosy, the Spanish? Italian? The European trader to exchange for items, then rare finds. These rocks can sell for quite a lot and this resets after every quest, so check back and exchange your points for rocks. You can also send your buddies into the Red October to gather items between quests and sell them. And the most expensive items to get from these are either mite pills or flame nuts. Pro tip, if you have flame nuts in real life, you should really get those checked out by a doctor. You can slightly increase the amount of money you receive at the end of a quest by eating the shmoney dongo whenever it's in rotation. It was never in rotation when I was recording. You also might find a fortune owl during a quest to increase the shmoneys at the end of a quest. Every time you go into an expedition tour, there will be item up surges that increases the amount of items you will receive when you gather for the first 10 minutes of the tour. There's a great video by Gaijin Hunter to make 300k shmoneys in 10 minutes that I'll link in the description. But to quickly summarize it, you make or buy some of the leather S high rank armor to get the geologist level 3 skill, then you go into the lava cavern expedition tour during a mining upsurge and I run around mining ore for 10 minutes and sell a bunch of it for easy money. You just run around this burning hellscape picking up rocks and dodging the burning souls of people who sell NFTs. By the way, if you go to forge armor and you don't see any resources needed for it, that means you can just pay for it, but it will be more expensive. For weapons, it's cheaper and costs fewer resources to upgrade existing weapons than to forge from scratch, but sometimes it'll be more expensive and more more resource costly to go through the entire weapon tree to get to the higher level stuff, so there's some trade-offs. Now here's some minor financial acquisition techniques, which are small, but it'll add up over time. You always gotta eat before you hunt, even before expedition tours. And you should always, always, always pay with Kimura points and not your shmoney. Don't use the real money, use the fake money. Although money isn't real, it's all made up. Always collect everything, even if you don't think you'll need it, you can always just sell it. Gathering spots refresh roughly every four minutes, so you can grab stuff from the same spot multiple times during a quest. You can also run around and gather at the end of a quest after you carve or capture to see if the monster dropped their wallet somewhere. Level 20 gathering palicos learn pilfer to steal extra drops from monsters, and the gathering cats also gather lots of items and stuff during quests. Now for my final piece of monetary advice. No matter how much money you make, money will always be tight for the rest of your life. I recommend trying to save at least 5-10% to of every paycheck you ever receive, which may not be that much, but it'll add up over time. But the most important thing to remember is that your worth as a person isn't determined by how much money you have or do not have. Also, scalpers should have their dicks chopped off, whether it dies! Was that eight things? I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to slap a fat wad of cash into that subscribe button for more Monster Hunter, more videos on other games, comment any tips you have for making shmoney in Monster Hunter Rise, and uh, that's it, video's over.